the Indianapolis 500, the center of the racing world. This is race day at Indianapolis. At the end of the grueling grind for man and machine is victory. Danger for all, glory for one. This racetrack has been the scene of some of the most spectacular and some of the most glorious moments in the entire world of sport. For many of the drivers here, like Derek Daly, it's one tough month. When I see Rick and uh, Mario do their 220s, I gasp for a minute and think, you know, that's incredible. I didn't really expect him to do that. So now the exclusive group of 33 is complete. Derek Daly and the rest know only one will win. Now, when I say that, sometimes people get a bit scared. They think, we're already going as fast as we can. We're already shoving as much into every day as we can. But remember, in my business, it's not about going faster. It's about being faster. And being faster has two key elements. Right people in the right positions doing the right things. But an even more important element of being faster in my business is the ability to remove the speed bumps that might be slowing you down. We have Derek Daly, the famous announcer, calling the race for us. David, with your background, you were a weatherman here in Indy. You should have known better. <laughs> When you announced we were going to do a movie about motor racing, you really sent a tidal wave of excitement all the way through open wheel racing. Hands up, has anyone here ever heard of Ireland? <laughs> In school? <laughs> they have! Do you think he told me the truth? <laughs> you. As regards your preparation for what you do every day, where do you think you are? on the starting grid of the race you are now in every day. As regards BASF, you're on the bleeding edge. Hands up those who think you're fairly creative and innovative with, within this room. What do you think? Hands up. Okay, a lot. Lots of people. Great. For those of you who put their hands up, allow me to disagree with you just for the next couple of minutes. Sometimes they're asked to go beyond their best. You may be asked to go beyond your best in the years to come. But in Formula One, I went through three distinctly different eras. In 1982, my last year there, good was good enough to win. Good teams could win races and win world championships. But then it took a shift at the end of the 90s. It went from good to great. I'm sure lots of you have read the Jim Collins book, Good to Great, end of the 90s. That nowadays to be successful, it took another leap. It went from great to extraordinary. And where does extraordinary live today? But what makes this work, what makes this successful, is when you put this model under the umbrella of a certain culture. It's not a culture of success. It's not a culture of winning. It is very much a culture of extraordinary. People. They disbelieve in the sustainability of their own performance. Can you imagine? It doesn't matter if you won last Sunday. You better disbelieve it's sustainable or else you become vulnerable. Yes. Have we taken the safety net away from people to have wild ideas? Have we put them into a box? Are they embarrassed to have a wild idea? Are they even encouraged to have a wild idea? Do you know there's not a single team in my business wins anything when 2% of the workforce are creative or innovative? You absolutely get run over by the competition. It's when you leave this hotel and you walk out the door, I'd love you to make a conscious decision to be extraordinary. Thank you all so much. I'm Derek Daly. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Enjoy the thank you.